Most of us are not good listeners. We listen just enough to get the gist of what somebody is saying, and then we start judging and evaluating and planning, and that's disconnecting. So I encourage people when they listen to listen intently for what's the bottom line. When I listen for the bottom line, not the top line, but the bottom line, it forces me to listen. I, I heard this gentleman, he's a professor, give a presentation. I have to go find his name. He, he teaches uh, music theory and jazz. And he said of his teacher, the person who taught him jazz, he said, the person instructed him to listen until you sweat. And I love that analogy. When we listen, we need to listen that intently because that's where we really learn. And in the methodology I teach and in the book, I borrow a framework from a colleague of mine at the business school. His name is Collins Dobbs. And the framework is three things, pace, space, grace. To be a better listener, we have to slow things down. As you alluded to, AJ, our attention is constantly pulled in different directions. People are very busy. I have to slow down. You cannot listen well fast. You have to slow down. We have to then Give ourselves space. Sometimes this is physical space. Move to a place where you can literally hear. But the other and more important space is the mental space. We have to clear the decks. We have to be present and really focus. And then finally is grace. And grace is giving ourselves permission not just to listen to the words that are spoken, but how they're said and the context in which they're said, and also to listen to our intuition. Because as you're saying things, it resonates with me or it brings up a red flag, and I need to listen to that as well. Let me give you an example in a spontaneous speaking situation where if you don't listen well, you can do damage. Imagine the three of us come out of a meeting and John turns to me and says, Matt, how do you think that meeting went? And I say, oh, John wants feedback. All right, here's what you did wrong. Here's what we could do better. This is what we need to think about next time. But had I really listened, I would have noticed that John came out the back door and AJ and I came out the front door. John was looking down and speaking more quietly than usual. Had I listened well, I would have realized John didn't want feedback. He wanted support. And by my itemizing all the things that went wrong, I am actually doing a disservice in that moment and perhaps long-term to our relationship. So you have to listen with pace, space, grace. Listen for the bottom line, and that will help. Now, I have to tell both of you, my wife gets really upset when I teach listening skills because she says <laughs> I need to practice what I teach. So we're all a work in progress and we all need I'm to I'm sure work AJ's heard listening. that too from his life. <laughs> <laughs> Common thread here. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Well, with that, you know, a lot of times with that problem solution mindset that we're carrying over from our career, we will approach communication in the same manner of like, oh, my, my wife has a problem, let's get to solution. When in actuality, it's more around validating that person's emotion. So like your example, where his body language is a bit down, he was asking a question, but he wasn't looking for feedback, he was looking for emotional support. If we're just looking at the information that's being exchanged, not the emotional context, not the unsaid of the fact that Johnny went out the back door instead of the front door, well, it's gonna be very hard for us to then actually meet in a space where Johnny feels heard and validated and he enjoyed that communication, and we actually move that relationship deeper beyond the surface level chit chat. 